In the tents of the palms where the creatures roam free. It's my Thank you so much. Games are. <laughs> Gaze upon your face. Have you done it yet? Let's see if he's got it up. We have a, a, a Games are did this. He's got two of them. Uh, that was the first. The second one is a really fancy production. It's about deep substrate. You want to hear that one? Absolutely. Get ready to dive into a funky scene with starting in aquarium or oh, so pristine. One inch of soil covered by sands of wind, the baseline's gonna make you understand. You gotta send and me this song. You gotta DM soul, me this song. To make it real, natural vibes, that's a deal. Things all around, swaying to the beat when it comes to fun. Take a seat. Get your groove on with the beautiful beat. The point beyond it's a funky beat. One inch of soil, two inches of tent. Let's go and wild the cat that's so great. Get your groove on with the pick of me. What be a mix of all you need? Why did you sign? Too cool. That's, Too cool. That is a good song. Yeah, thank you, James R. That's such yeah. fun. Yeah, you did an awesome job. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, that's it is. AI. The AI oh, that AI stuff. Amazes me. Amazing. I know. I know. Yeah. I sent him a, a poem I did. I did a video of it. It's called My Little Fishies. Um, yeah. He's going to see what uh, see what can happen with that. That'll be interesting. That will well, be. That's a lot of fun. It really is neat. Yeah, it is. Fish Keepy, Fish Keepy has a question. What's your question? 
Yeah, that was made with the AI. Make them two on Suno, says Cornwall. Carly Puig, grinning from Rio de Janeiro. My water is my water is six months today, thriving all natural. Bravo! That's so awesome. So's your tank. So now my tank I was adding sand and doing algae, but algae kept growing. Well, I tell you what, um, you you need to add more plants. I mean, that's really the key. You can cut back on your light, you can do water changes, all that stuff, but without more plants. If you have more plants, they are going to outpace the algae. They will outcompete it. So that's really the solution. Mm -hmm. William Avery, good to see you. Turtle, found your channel as it got back into the hobby two months ago. Perfect match. Caddy, how can I increase NO3 in a natural way? Nitrates. Um... Don't worry about it. It'll happen all by itself. Not even an issue. Uh, if you're feeding your fish, if they're pooping, um, it'll just it'll just happen in spite of it. Landa, Landon Larouche, Larouchelle, would it be okay to take something from outside, put it in my tank? And if so, what should I do to it before? Uh, be very careful with it so you don't kill it. Bring it in and dump it in your tank. Now, what we do recommend for the faint-hearted is that you put it in a resurrection jar so you, or, or a tub or a vat or a whatever so you can look at it and study it and think about it and become friends with it for a while, and then it'll make the transition much more comfortable. Almost at 250,000 subs. That's, That's right. We're getting close, aren't we? We're 240-something. What is it? 240-something. What is it? Oh, i got to show you something, but I don't think I can. I tried to do this earlier. And I got tangled up, so I better not try it again. Um, <laughs> yeah. We have we have a uh, a cloth shopping bag with discus on it, a father fish shopping bag uh, that's as merch. You know what? I could I could I could point my camera at it. Let me do that. I can. I do got that. the link in yeah. the um, chat. Pardon. I got. I put the link in the chat. Okay, good. Let me let me just look at it real quick. There we be. That's gonna be cool. Isn't that cool? Yeah. It's a a a, a canvas bag. Well, I turned the camera the wrong way. <laughs> we'll do that it happens. again. There we go. Now I got it all messed up. I had it all set. And then I got fancy. That's pretty good, actually. Yeah, that is. We'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that for now. <laughs> hey, so you work. can see I got, yeah, let me show you that again. I got um, mm -hmm. some more tanks set up. This, the bottom, the bottom one on the right has cardinals in it and two very big stands of uh, a pot of Jeton. That's the one down there. Whoops. Beautiful. That's uh, Brazilianzas and, and uh, Christmas, I think. And then the middle one has angels in it. Oh. And some Jiraperi. And I don't know what else. It's got angels and Jiraperi for sure. Um, I, I don't remember what else. They, I have to look to see. Jiraperi and 
that's oh yeah it has a couple of uh, us for name it small uh the the gold us uh, or the white us for name it. that's the tr the true giant garami the one oh, wow. that gets two feet tall and then this Whoa. guy oh they're cute has a bunch of it's got a bunch of stuff in it I brought from home. It has some native bluefin killies. It's got the neons, the yeah, neons and cardinals in there. They're kind of mixed in together. Some pygmy cories, um, and a few other things. That tank's already gone through a couple of couple of evolutions. There's a uh, um, spotted raphael, not a raphael. Spotted catfish, an African cat. Let's see. Have you decided what you're going to stock the other tanks with yet, Father Fish? Um, I've got fish coming. I don't know for sure. Uh, I had ordered some Uwaru, but they got oh, scratched. Wow. So Aww. I was hoping to get something really fancy. I'm I'm working on it. I will do that at some point. Um, and I've got to do the big tank, and the big tank will inevitably have big fish in it. I keep saying I want to do a a big tank with little fish, but then when I get the big tank set up, I've got big fish, and they yeah. got to go in a big tank. So there you go. I don't have them yet, though. So. It still remains to be seen how it's going to work out. Oh, let me show everybody my my newest purchase. Look at that little beauty. That thing is beautiful. <laughs> that is, I'll tell you what, I just, I started playing with it today for the first time, and it was a joy. It is, it, it is so it's got so many really nice features that it's what a microscope ought to be. Plus, see this thing on top? That's for a camera. I haven't figured out how to do that yet, but I'll be able to hook a camera into it. It's going to be wonderful. I'm really, really very excited about it. Hey, all of us are excited, too. We want to see what you're going to observe through that, because this is going to be yeah, amazing. Me, too. <laughs> me too. See, I could get this closer, actually. I may as well. <laughs> Which way? There, right there. Hey, that works? That's work. Yeah, that's better, I guess. All right, yeah, let's see what's in, the, what's in the chat. What's going on? What are people talking see. about? Show you what's in your fish tank, right? New no purchase, 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 right. That's what I need to do. I need to get out and do some do some freshwater collecting, um, some freshwater fishing, and get uh, get some. I, I would really like to get a chain pickerel. Um, That'd be nice. And I can I can get a bass, some sunfish, bluegills, that sort of stuff. They're they're just such pretty fish, and they would do really well in the big, uh, in the big tank. Oh yeah, they do. Yeah, awesome. I've had all kinds of little, little microscopes, <laughs> dozens of them, and I get frustrated with them. This thing, it was like I I just started looking at the letters. I put a little. Uh, flip a paper under it with printing on it and was looking at the letters and I got such clarity and brightness and depth. I was just blown away by it. So it's going to, it's going to be really cool. Oh yeah. You're going to have some fun with it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I get, I figure the camera thing out and we'll, it'll be good to go. Yeah, well, you know what they don't have though is a what? nose guard. The problem is to use it right, you've got to brace your head 
So you're not wobbling. Oh, yeah. And there's no way to do that. You can't push against the microscope. So I have to hold my hand, hold my head and the microscope with my hand so I'm not moving my head around. Because you've you got to be perfectly still. I, yeah, I don't attachment. understand you why me. they don't have just some kind of a nose guard or forehead guard yeah. or something. I tried it with glasses, and that doesn't work. Yeah. It's, there is they a, never make them glasses a, friendly. There's a dial here right in the middle of it, and I don't know mm -hmm. what. Can we see it? That, that round thing. See the black yeah. round thing in the middle? I mm -hmm. took that off, and there's just a, there's nothing under it. It's hmm. uh, uh, an internal workings thing. So I have no idea what that is. Um, but it's possible a, a guard could be put on that. I don't know. I need to if, work it out and figure if out. If you type in the item number and the brand name of the microscope, they'll tell you everything about it on YouTube. That's what I had to do with mine to figure out how to hook it up to the computer. Yeah. <laughs> Which well, mine's not as powerful as that It did one. not come with a booklet. Oh, no. I know. I hate when they do that. Yeah. I've, been, I've been figuring all this stuff out. Oh. Not that it's complicated. It's not complicated. It's really pretty straightforward. But it's got so many light adjustments. That's what's really nice. Because you oh, can yeah. get shadow and brightness. In order to be able to pull things out. So pretty cool. That is. Yuri first, not backwards coming forward. So I'll say he's he's as a massive bipolar flu. What are you talking about? I don't even want to know. Oh no. Bradley. A focus diapter. Is that right? I don't know. Um I don't know. I think Jenny's at work. I'm just stepping on her work here. <laughs> you go, Jenny. <laughs> Jenny is the one who made the uh, is doing all the merch, mm -hmm. and she's she's uh she called me up all excited the other day. She visited a local pet shop, local fish store, wearing one of her shirts, and the guy was admiring it. And she said, "Do you know who made that?" I did. He said, no. So he's going to maybe carry some in his shop. That'll be pretty neat. Oh, that'll be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that will be awesome. Slauzers watch whatever he pleases. Kenny D. Hello, Kenny. Nice to see you. Kenny D. Uh, used to live in Florida. He's in Arizona now. He and his daughter we're members of our club in Florida. So, oh, that's cool. Know, I got to know him personally. Yeah. Sweet, sweet man. Um, that's awesome. Kind of a, um, a lifelong hippie is what he is. <laughs> the pure form in its purest form. The man of love and peace. That's and awesome. He honestly is just a very sweet man. Daniel Lingalis is getting plants for his new 10 gallon tank. Yeah, we need to uh, be sure to need to click on. Oh, look at that. Nobody's clicking on the on the thumbs up. Yeah, we, we only got, got five. How many people we have here? Uh, 91 people. And I've got seven thumbs up. They gotta be more than that, wouldn't you think? Yeah, Let's I think see. so. Yeah. I can try refreshing it and see if you want. I just did. And it came up with 33. Hey. That's well, better than awesome. seven. Yeah. Aquarium's animals and me. Hello, hello, hello. Cornwall. Carly Quig. Um, yeah, 35 is what I got. Bradley setting up a 20. That's awesome. Cool. 
44, 46, it's jumping up. Jumping up, it is. Jumping up. You guys are on it. Yep. I figured out something. We were talking last week. I have... I've always paid attention to the the number that says... Um, what is the way of... How is it described? Consecutive viewers. Most consecutive viewers. And I have assumed for some foolish reason, because I never thought about it, that that was actually the total number of viewers. And I never really understood why there was such a big difference between that and the total views, which were always substantially higher. Until last week when it dawned on me that total consecutive viewers simply means the most number of people who are online watching at any given point in time. That could be a given second, the most at any given point in time. It does not mean the total number of people who uh, are viewing. So if there are a thousand views, as there typically are, then that means there are upwards of a thousand people online at uh, or on online sometime during the show. That suddenly made me feel so much better. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's so, amazing to think. <laughs> yeah, really. So, you know, it's it runs, I don't know what it runs. It runs 1,000 to 1,200 or so on average. That means there are 1,000 people in here um, for varying periods of time. Very few people are here for the whole time. There are some. There's a core group who are with us from beginning to end and don't want to miss a second of it. Uh, but most people are in for a little while and then they got something else to do. They, this, is, this is a long video. I mean, these live streams... This one's going to run about two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. That's a long time. But we probably will wind up with 2,000 viewers in that length of time. So that means a lot of people will have gotten the chance to plug in. Now, here's the problem. During that two-hour period, there may only be 10 to 15 minutes that are actually worth watching. <laughs> hey, the but everybody has fun. <laughs> the rest of just chatting and nonsense, like what I'm talking about. <laughs> Erie, wash your mouth out. Yeah, we, we, I think we need to start. Um, we, we need to, we need to do something about Erie. I don't know. <laughs> he just, he's, he pushes, pushes the edges, he does. What else is there? Billy Bob. Billy Bob Blogs. Nice to see you. Dale Dauphin. Dauphiné. Just got here and gave a like. Thank you, Dale. Dauphiné. Father Fish, um, Silver Fox 40 has a question for you. Okay. Um, Father Fish, I've got plants and pots with soil. As I've already had a sand-only substrate, do you think I should start over and add soil to the substrate or just have the pots as the plants are growing? It's really your call. You can do it either way. If you start over with a soil substrate, you will be ahead of the game. Otherwise, you'll be playing catch-up. It'll in six months, there will be no effective difference. So it's a matter of whether you want to tolerate a slow growth for six months or whether you want to do the work of breaking it down and resetting it up. It seems like a hassle, 
but frankly, it's not. It takes 10 to 15 minutes to put the dirt in level, put the sand in level, and then fill it with water. Filling it with water takes longer than, than putting the substrate in by a big stretch. So it's moving the water that's really what's time consuming. So it's, but either way, it'll work fine either way. Liquid candy media has something to say about fertilizers. What is this? Watch a recent video talking about fertilizer and want to stop using it. How do I wean my plants off it since they're basically addicted to it? Well, you really need you really need a dirted substrate. If you do not have a dirted substrate, then start building a mulch food web. Start putting um, a mulched leaves from outdoors, from a pond or a creek. Uh, start putting dry leaves in. Get that built up. You want about an inch through much of the tank. If you can do that, you will that will provide over a period of not too many months a substantial amount of nutrient in in the substrate. So you that's the way you can wean your plants from it uh, from the fur by building that food web. Uh, the the other option is to pull the plants out scrape off um, an, an inch or so of sand, put dirt down, and then recap it and replant your plants, fill it with water. If you're going to, if you have a tank and you want to dirt it, but you don't want to break it all the way down, and you have half an inch of substrate, even an inch of substrate, Drain the water, leave it in there, leave the substrate in there, put the dirt on top of it, an inch of dirt, put two inches of sand on top of that. It's going to give you an, a, a four-inch substrate. So you might not want to do that in a 20-gallon in a long. But in a 20-tall or a 29, a 55, a, a, even a a 40 tall, any taller tank, the four inches is not going to make a difference. In truth, I have a 35 that's 12 inches tall. It's got right now five inches of, sub, of substrate in it, seven inches of open water, and about 50 fish, and it's littered with plants. It does not slow things down. It's a little weird to look at. But frankly, I don't pay attention to it anymore. Now, when I get to the point where I've got to put more sand in, which is coming up because it's building up a lot of mom, I will have to go in and remove uh, 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 about half of the substrate that's in there. And then I'll just recap that with an inch of sand. So I'll take like two and a half inches out and put one inch back in, and then replant everything. To do that, I've got to tear all my plants out. So what that means is I need to reach the point in my own sentiment where I'm ready to tear the tank down and rebuild it. Um, but you don't have to go all the way. You, you can leave whatever substrate you have in there and work with that, build on that. Andrew Finna has a question for you, Father Fish. I have sword tails and a heavily planted tank, and they seem happy and healthy. Another channel who breeds these fish said they need lots of swimming space. Should I trim my plants? You know, it's a personal matter. If you're going to trim them, it's really important to put the trimmings back in the tank. What you don't want to do is be taking things out because the more you take out, the more you deplete the tank of what's already in there. 
You want to do the opposite of that. You want to be adding to, not taking away. Now, a tank will reach a point where it becomes satiated, like being full and not being able to eat anymore. A tank will get to that place. And when it does, it'll stabilize, but it may also begin to deteriorate in some mild kinds of ways. You can stave that off a bit by doing some water changes, but the basic issue is it's got more biological material in there than the volume of water can really tolerate. So the solution then is to do clippings or to, to use it as a mother tank, pull some plants out to get them going in other uh, excuse me, in other tanks. So I think my 55 has reached several of those points. The tank has been set up for 20 some odd years, 22, 23 years. It's gone through one, two, three, three major changes in 23 years. The last one was when I moved it up here from Florida. And that actually was minor because all I did was lower the water and then fill it back up. I had water in it. I actually carried fish in that tank from Florida to Maryland that survived. They were little Formosa, survived in the tank, as did many of the plants. Not all, but many did. Um... But there have been there have been two other times when I have when I first got it, what did I do? I think all I did was add some sand when I first got it. And then it crashed, but that really did not involve somebody dumped a can of food in and it sat there for a day and fouled. Uh, killed all the fish. I I um, siphoned out what I could of of the food, left about half the water in there, which was still foul. Left the plants in, filled it back up with water, and and cranked up two sponge filters. And within two days, it was crystal clear. When a tank goes bad, it will not stay bad. When a tank fouls, it will not stay foul unless the condition that caused it to become foul is persistent. In other words, if your tank is foul because you're overfeeding and you continue to overfeed, it will stay foul. But if you will stop overfeeding, it will clear up all by itself. Now, you may not want to do that because it may put undue stress on the fish. The plants don't care. For the most part, the plants will be fine. They can tolerate bad conditions for a, for a period of time. Not forever, mind you, but for a few days, a week maybe. Rarely will a, a, a foul tank remain foul for even a week. It'll be clear in two to three days. If it's really bad, it might take four or five days, but it'll clear up. So there was that event. And then I was at one point, I was growing uh, Sagittarius in it, like, like it was a farm. And I was pulling them out and selling them. I must have sold hundreds of big three-foot-long Valisneri that were growing in that tank. It was just, it was exploding. And I did that for a couple of months and then realized that they weren't growing back. The growth had stopped. I had taken so much out that there were no nutrients left. The plants as they, a plant, all plants, grow leaves that die. 
It's a natural part of the growth. When a plant grows a leaf, that leaf dies and a new leaf takes its place. Leaves get old and worn out. And they disintegrate. They die. The plant stops sending nutrients into it and lets it die. Those leaves need to remain in the tank because they are the nutrients that that plant has been sucking out of the out of the tank, out of the substrate. So by leaving them in there, they return to the substrate. And you're able to maintain a cycle then. If you have a good food web, those, those deteriorating plants will be broken down and eaten by microfauna and macrofauna. That's one of the things shrimp eat in a tank. Snails eat it. Catfish eat it. Lots of the fish will eat it. And then tinier and tinier and tinier little animals eat it until the bacteria attack what's left and break it down to the point where it then can be taken back up by the plants. That's the cycle. It's a very natural cycle. It's one you need to allow to happen. So much of making a, a tank work is in allowing it to do what it's trying to do and not getting in the way, not cleaning things up, not changing everything. Leaving it alone allows it to, to do all of the things that it naturally needs to do in order to be able to thrive and grow. It's critical to understand that. We have such a mentality about fixing everything that we fix it to death. We fix things to the point where they can't survive anymore. Stop fixing. Don't create problems that do not exist. Deal with problems when they are problems. Don't create problems which you then are going to be forced to deal with. Even at that. If you create a problem in your tank, the best way to solve that problem is to leave it alone and let it work itself out. It will. It will work itself out. Nature does not require constant supervision. It's, it, is, it is the most glorious natural process, natural system you can possibly imagine. It, 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 it moves consistently and coherently toward health, toward growth, toward being, toward being strong and healthy. That's, that's its natural proclivity. That's what it does. You have to let that happen. You have to not get in the way of that. Trust. Trust that the natural system knows more about how to maintain itself than you do. Mm -hmm. Because it does. You can be a guardian and you should be. You can be a farmer, but as many, many farmers are discovering, plowing the field and throwing fertilizer in it is killing the ground. It's killing the farm. More and more farmers are realizing that a rich, loamy soil built up from mulch, built up from leaves, from organic material, with seeds simply planted in that material, with no tilling at all of any kind, simply allowing it to go fallow, and then, and then covering that crop after it's produced all of its what it, whatever it was raised for, covering it with mulch. So where do you get the mulch? The tree, the leaves of trees. 
The leaves of trees are the food for the entire nature system. For farming, for the forest, for the rivers and creeks, for every aspect of nature, it is fall, the fall season, when all of the leaves fall off the trees, the winter when dead branches fall off, and they all go back into the soil. They renew, replenish, nurture the soil. They do the same thing in the aquarium. They are the source of life in the aquarium. And that life is more microscopic than macroscopic. They're vastly more microscopic animals living and thriving, providing a foundation in your aquarium than there are two-inch fish. By by a factor of thousands, perhaps millions. Don't mess with it. It'll be just fine. The, let's see, about a year ago, two years ago, Two years ago, I took half of the substrate out of the 35-gallon and recapped it with an inch of sand. I feel like I need to do it again. The tank has overgrown itself. Um, partly, I think that's because I did an experiment with light in which I put substantially more light on that tank for a substantially longer period of time than was apparently healthy for it. <laughs> because it has it has uh it has grown but it's grown a kind of organic organic uh, uh, mulmy uh algae ish kind of mass, which is not particularly attractive and I think is not particularly healthy for the fish. That was an experiment gone sour. I have reduced the lighting. I no longer have 400 watts on that four-foot tank. I now had 300 watts on it, but I think I'm going to cut that down to uh, maybe 150 to just reduce the 50 watts each rather than 100 watts each. Uh, for a long time, I used 60-watt LED strips, four-foot strips. That's all I used at my shop. That was, that was all of the lighting. I, and I've used that. I've got, a, I've got one on this tank over here, that middle tank. I don't have any fish in there yet that has uh, um, um, bulb plants in it currently. Um, it's perfectly adequate light. I don't know what makes me think I need to have more light. <laughs> anyway, hey, the so that actually work. there's only been that. I'm sorry. I, I hate that the experiment didn't work out for you, though. Well, I needed to learn. I needed to learn about light. I've been under, under lighting for years. And, and this was an attempt to over light. Um, and it's not better off for it. It's probably worse off for it. Well, the good so thing is, Nat, you've got it figured out now. <laughs> well, we'll see. I need to get back to it. Melissa watching from New Zealand. Nice to have you with us. What time is it in New Zealand? She, that's six in the morning. About about 12 hours. Wow. Goodness. That's a big time difference. <laughs> can, yeah. Can you put beach sand in an aquarium? 
toxic blazer. Absolutely you can. Uh, there are a couple of considerations. If you're setting up a saltwater tank, go uh, and, and you're near an ocean, go out into the water to your waist with a shovel and a bucket and dig up a bucket of sand. It'll be worth half your life to get it in because it's going to be really heavy. Yeah. You might want some muscular dude or dudette to drag it in. Um, but that's what you want in the saltwater tank. You want that wet sand because it's full of bacteria, it's full of microfauna, and it will kickstart the saltwater tank. Also, bring water back. Use that water. Use na natural native water, natural native sand. If it's worth a day trip, it's worth a two-day trip to do it because it will last permanently. That substrate will never go bad. It will be there for as long as the tank is there doing its job. The same with the water. If you cover it carefully with glass so it does not evaporate out, or you only replace with RO water when it does, that salt water will be good permanently. Yeah, well. <laughs> it's worth the effort. For a freshwater tank, go up on the beach to the dunes, high above the the where the high where the highest high tide is. You want to get up above any salt intrusion, where the rain has washed the sand. That sand is pure and perfect. Get a bucket or two of that. Make sure, make sure that you're not in a state like Florida where it is a crime punishable by serious financial penalties to take sand off of the beach. Mm -hmm. Now, you can take whatever is in your shoes, and you may do that routinely for a month or two to get enough, and that'll be legal. Might even fill your pockets. That's pushing it a little bit. Not much. You can you could easily get away with that. Um, just be aware of what the local uh, the the local uh, 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 policies and restrictions are about sand. There is in Florida, for example, it it is a, it is against state law to remove driftwood from the beach. Mm -hmm. Imagine that, to remove driftwood. What is that driftwood precisely going to do on the beach that is right. of any significance whatsoever? <laughs> Nevertheless, there are lots of, lots of other better places to get driftwood. Although I got to admit that driftwood from the sea is remarkable stuff. That's beautiful. But you can get it in a swamp too. You can get it yeah, in freshwater <laughs> just as well. And that's legal and that's okay. So, yes, you, you can certainly do wild sand. You can do sand wherever sand is. Wherever you find sand, the, the, it will be sand. Sand is sand. Sand is crushed granite. It is. It is crushed. Well, you don't want crushed oyster shell or clam shell. You don't want that because that's going to dissolve. I was watching a thing recently, silica, crushed silica, which is quartz. Mm -hmm. Crushed quartz or crushed, uh, any kind of crushed rock is perfectly effective. It's totally inert. That's good enough. I was watching some guy claimed he was a PhD answering questions about aquariums and the like. And I caught him in three absolute stupidities. 
one right after the other. I remember two of them. One of them was that the sand on beaches is crushed shell. Well, it's not. If it were crushed shell, it would be dissolved. It would not be sand. There is crushed shell. He talked about the parrotfish and how the parrotfish crushes the shell, which it does. And it it precipitates to the bottom, and guess what it does? It dissolves in relatively short order. In a matter of a few days, it is gone. It's in the water. It is what creates the hardness in the water. The sand on the beach is not crushed shell. Now, you can find shell banks on a really nice beach where there, where where there's a lot of tidal influence, where there's maybe a jetty and the tide is swirling and it'll drag shells in and pile them up. You can have shell beds feet deep and they are amazing places to 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 crawl through and work through and find the most astounding jewels. Little tiny baby shells of every sort imaginable. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. But they dissolve. They don't turn into sand. Sand is not, sand is inert. It is not soluble. If it were soluble, it would not be sand. So crushed crushed coral, while you can put crushed coral in a saltwater aquarium, it has a tendency to, to dissolve on the surface and create a, create a shell, literally a shell on the surface of the substrate preventing anything from going in or coming out. So it's not a good idea to do that. That was one. The other one was do fish sleep? And he said, of course fish sleep. He said, whales sleep upside down, he says. Whales sleep with their tail on the bottom. And then he said, uh, hippopotamus sleep uh, by rising to the surface and breathing and coming back down. And I, at that point, I was done. I, just, I had to leave a comment. And it was very <laughs> simple. It was, whales are not fish, nor are hippopotamus. <laughs> why, why did he think they were fish? It's like, that what? That I mean, is just wild. Well, it's referring to mammals, aquatic mammals as fish. He just, uh, he was out of his depth is what it was. Yeah, just a little. He didn't belong there doing that. <laughs> Stu had a steak pie for dinner. Sounds wonderful. All right, what that else is-, is going on? Stan Pittman, did somebody say pie? Where's the pie? Where's the pie? I don't want to get to the pie here. That's P-I. You guys are impossible. Cornwall (laughs) and Erie, the pair of them. Yeah. Doom pie. All right. What else is going on here? We've got a question. Hey, oh, I had some got, birthday cake. Yeah. My uh, Brenda made uh, a coconut, a white white coconut cake for her oh. husband's birthday, and I knew she was making a cake, so I bought a bottle of wine. Actually, I had one stowed away. I grabbed the wine and went over to their house and invited myself to the birthday party. Leading with the bottle of wine. Oh, and that it was works. wonderful. 
Oh God, it was so good. Yeah. Just some really best, best coconut cake I've ever had. I had that. I had potato chips, which I've got here, I think. And, and then I was riding around downtown and found Horror of Horrors, an ice cream shop. Oh, no. <laughs> I did. Two scoops. Butter pecan. Oh, that's and good. And chocolate raspberry. Oh, yeah. That and was I actually said, kind of worth it there. Right. I'm going to put it in the freezer and I'll have it later. It never made it to the freezer. It never does. So I upped my insulin dose last night. It was still up a bit this morning. Dosed it again. Haven't checked it since then, but I'm I'll be good now for the rest. The, the for the day I'll be good. Uh, what else is going on here? Where do I live now? Uh, I'm in Maryland, in Salisbury, about a half an hour from Ocean City and Assateg. So I'm very close to the ocean. Um, and I'm gonna, I got a boat, which I'm looking to get in the water this spring within, excuse me, within the next few weeks. So I can get out and do some collecting. I'm, I got it to do collecting. My accountant didn't believe the boat was a business expense, but I convinced him it was. Good. 200 watts, enough for a 40 breeder. Yeah, it's it's plenty. The same lights I had on the 30 long. Uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be plenty. Two 100, 100 watt. I'll tell you what you ought to do, though, is you ought to hang them because it'll provide a little bit of coning. The problem with LEDs is they don't cone. Um, the the LED light is a beam, a single straight beam. If they if they are put in some kind of a concave reflector, that reflector will 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 cone to a certain extent, but really not very much. So the higher you can get it, the better. If you've got it five foot above the tank, it will not lose penetration as it goes down. It's like a laser. Works just like a laser. That's really what a laser is. It's an LED, pinpoint LED. It will shoot all the way to the bottom of the tank. And incandescent light will not do that, but LED will. So you can have it really high and it'll still penetrate. There, there won't be loss and it'll cone. And the coating really is helpful because it fills up all of those uh, otherwise shaded areas. That's good to know. Especially Imagine where that person things. got their degree. I hear that, Steve. I hear that. You know, the terrible part of it was it was a piece that was done by a science um, channel a channel that specializes in providing scientific explanations for this, that, and the other thing. And they were using him to describe all of this aquarium stuff. It was dreadful, just absolutely dreadful. And he must have gone through 20 or 30 items. I didn't even listen to them all. I listened to the first two and the last one. That was enough for me. They were all three wrong. Just yeah, dead wrong. The fish dream, Carly wants to know. The fish dream. The fish think. The fish think. That's a good question. I don't believe that fish think. I don't believe they do. I think fish are in the moment, utterly and absolutely in the moment. 
I don't think they have a memory. Thinking is a function of remembering. Now, there are... I may, I, I may have to backtrack on this a little. <laughs> fish, have, fish have learned a behavior with, which is a function of repetition. My hunch, though, is that doesn't work the same way a memory does. And here's why I believe that's true. Because if you're chasing a fish with a net, and it's darting around, darting away. And you stop and you go back five minutes, ten minutes, half an hour later and put the net in. Unless you've done this a hundred times before, it's not going to remember the net. It'll be, it'll be calmed down enough. You'll, you, you maybe can catch it. It doesn't have that kind of memory. There is a behavioral response that develops like a Pavlovian response to the relationship between food and walking in a room. We've all experienced that. Walking in the room, the fish come up to the glass. <laughs> Why? To say hello? No, probably not. <laughs> Sometimes, but no. They're doing it because when you walk in the room, you pick up the food and you put food in. So they're there waiting for the food. They, there is a correlation that occurs. I don't think that's really memory. I think that's something else. I think it's a behavioral correlation, which, which maybe, maybe can be defined as memory-related. Memory but... It, it strikes me that fish, that fish do not have the ability to figure things out the way higher order animals can, the way a crow can or a squirrel can or a dog or a cat or, or so many other animals, mice and rats, I mean, you name it. Any kind of mammal has enough memory to be able to think things through and figure things out. Fish don't do tools, That's for true. example. They now they may tear leaves off a plant and make a nest, and I guess that can be called tool making. I guess in the same way that a bird makes a nest. I don't know. There are caveats in all this. Yeah, there are. <laughs> it's it's not absolute, but. But it, it strikes me that to fish dream, I would not say that fish dream. Aha, aha. I know, in fact, that fish do not dream. And the reason I know that, in fact, is because I know, in fact, that fish do not sleep. So how could they possibly dream? That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> Carly says, I think my fish dream. They dream of new plants coming in. <laughs> no, that's you, Carly. That's you dreaming of new plants coming in. <laughs> I think that's probably all of us. <laughs> really? Daydream, says Neil. The fish daydream. Do I like, oh, now now Carly's saying that that they're hallucinating. <laughs> Insomnia gives you hallucinations. And since fish don't sleep, they must have insomnia and so they must hallucinate. It, it's a it is a twisted world. <laughs> that it is. <laughs> you know well, yeah, it's the the best thing to do with this is to move along. The super what? sunfish. Yep. Father fish. My corridor always digs up the mall, working its way down the substrate. Is that bad? No, that's good. He's doing that because he's looking for food. He's looking for 
for little worms, for for uh, mom worms. He's looking for copepods, other little animals, little macrofauna that's living in there. He's looking for bits of algae, perhaps. Whatever he can find, that's a source of food. There are a lot of things that live in that mom that the Cory is vitally interested in. Dreaming of their next bloodworm, says Stu. Like that. When uh, Thomas Patton, when when do I clean my glass? Actually, I did that just before the show started. I did it on several tanks. Not all of them, mind you, but the ones that were really kind of grimy. And I see I missed a spot. I missed the whole area is what I missed. Uh, oh, I've got Synodonis in here. And they're up swimming around. Let's see if we can look at them. Oh, cool. You see him? Oh, he is pretty. Oh, wow. That is a beautiful fish. I think four or five of them in here. Um, Andre's uh, bioaquatics raised these. He actually, uh, he, he spawns them and raises them commercially. Oh, well, that's, that's awesome. What is he eating? I got food on the top. He's found food on the top. <laughs> oh, this is my new camera, by the way. Can you tell? Yeah, that new camera is nice. Well, I've got it screwed onto the stand, which is not. So oh, I can absolutely. actually move it around. Yeah. <clears throat> oh. Talk cake and eat fish. Works for me. <laughs> what is this? Mason wants to get everybody's number. I don't know. Let's see. Bloodworms are coronamid larvae. Hmm. Did not know that. I don't think so. Bloodworms are, I don't think so. I've never looked into coronamid larvae. I don't believe they're a larvae. Uh, I've seen them breed. They're not a larvae. Is there an online website to to buy live brine shrimp for bettas? Good question. They would be hard to ship. You're better off hatching them and growing them out. It's not complicated to do. I have I just set up a, a brine shrimp hatching operation because I've got a bunch of stuff now that is going to benefit from it. The critical thing is to get the salt right. Once you get the salt right, it's real, real simple. What you want to do, though, is contact Brine Shrimp Direct. The company is called Brine Shrimp Direct. They sell. You can make this yourself. I've done it. It's not hard, but they sell what's called decapsulated hatching brine shrimp. These are brine shrimp eggs that are refrigerated in a brine solution, very heavy brine solution. So they're in stasis. They stay in that condition for about six months and then deteriorate. But if you use them within six months, they will hatch out in eight to 12 hours uh, and are immediately uh, feedable to to small fish. You can also grow them out if you put them outdoors in in a brine solution. If you're hatching them out regularly, you're going to wind up with waste brine. Throw that in the outdoor bin. The only issue 
is you need to prevent rainwater from getting into it. And you want to allow the sun to get to it because it needs to grow algae for the, uh, for the brine shrimp to eat. That's their, that's their natural food. <clears throat> so you'll need to put it in some kind of environment like a greenhouse environment or something that's covered but not shaded. Uh, so that light can get to it, but uh, the rainwater cannot. Rainwater would dilute it to the point it wouldn't be any. It would not be saline anymore. But it's a great way to grow out brine shrimp. If you if you will just throw out the the end of the brine shrimp hatching into that in a week, that they're half grown in two weeks. You have adult brine shrimp, but and, and you do nothing. Absolutely nothing. The sun creates enough algae to feed them. It's not huge harvests, but it's real nice. And if you do some, the larger the container, the more you'll succeed. Uh, 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 surface space is critical, not volume. So you want something shallow and and as big as you can manage it. What else? Well, something so, dance. Yeah, they really to the hatch. Salt and Dance was curious. Do you recommend four or six female betas in one fish tank? It doesn't matter. Four or six, yes. The answer is yes. I recommend four or six female betas. Yes. Love it. <laughs> Midnight in Ireland. Oh, wow. Like to brine and dine my fish, says Carnot. <laughs> I'll bet you just do, too. Sultan, Sultana dance. Life of flame. Second plant lady, does a person have to pet the resurrection jar for 30 days, or can it be used before that? Uh, how much of the jar should be poured in? How to keep it full? Uh, well, there are three questions there. The, the first one is, uh, do, do you have to pet the jar? Um, and it, the answer is yes, you you do. It's It's really vital that you make friends with your resurrection jar. Uh, and we all know that that animals that that you want to domesticate, uh, you, you you need to be affectionate toward them. And we, with cats and dogs, we pet them. Um, there are special considerations for things like moena and detritus worms, that which make traditional petting tricky, but you'll find a way. The, the important thing is to is to learn to enjoy and appreciate and yes even love your uh, uh, critters in the resurrection jar. So you want it to sit for thirty days, or can it be used before that? Yes, absolutely. It most certainly can be used before that. the The reason we do thirty days is to accommodate the faint of heart. Those who are panic-stricken by the very notion that something alive might be put in their tank. Ew. I know. So it, it, it sometimes takes 30 days to get over that. It's, it's kind of an addiction. And the, the resurrection jar is... It's really a therapy. It really is actually a therapy to to show you and and to comfort you with the notion that there are living things out there that aren't going to snarl and bite and claw and tear and and cause your skin to fall off your face. Absolutely. They're okay. It's okay. 
So once you get some comfort level, you can begin putting some in. What I like to do is stir it up a little, swirl it, and then pour a little bit in. You don't want to put a lot in. It's possible to put so much in that it overwhelms the tank with biomass and can foul the water. You don't want to do that. Put it in in small doses. But do it routinely. You can do that every day. And also begin adding dry leaves because that's the natural food that these microfauna are going to need to be able to survive. So start building that up one or two leaves a day or every other day. Eventually, after a few months, you should have a, a rich, loamy, uh, 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 I don't want to call it detritus, but it is, a bed of, of leaves and mulch and other material laying in your tank looking like you never clean it. And you don't. And that's an important consideration. You must never clean your tank. I am proud to say that the one video I have made that has gone to 2.2 million views, mind you, is entitled, Don't Clean Your Tank. The message is getting out there. Absolutely. Uh, what medium-sized fish would you recommend for a 55-gallon? Well, first of all, angelfish. And there are so many other uh, cichlids in that category that are wonderful fish, wonderful cichlids that we never even think about. Chocolate cichlids, they get a little bigger, but they're magnificent fish. Um, wiru, I mentioned earlier, are a really pretty one. Discus, of course. Um, Geophagus is a stunningly beautiful fish. None of these are diggers. They're not going to dig anything up. They're not going to rip the plants up. They're gentle fish. Uh, and they're all stunningly beautiful fish. There are eight or ten species of geophagus. I have some juraperi here, which is my favorite. They're little yet, but they'll get six, eight inches and, and be really stunning. Um, there are others. There are plenty of small, smaller fish, too, like, like the... Um, uh, like the rams, Brazilianses is, is a good example. Very pretty fish. Um, there are so many. There are just so many really beautiful cichlids, just cichlids. There are so many cichlids that are like three to four inches. South American cichlids, Central American cichlids that are perfect in a tank. Um, and then all of the Tanganyikas. Nearly all of them. I mean, there are Taganyikans that get big, but there are a lot of them that stay small, like the Jiraberi. So many will stay pretty small and work out really well in a, in a tank that size. They will actually spawn. A lot of these fish will. They'll create a little area and spawn. Lots and lots of fish like that. Uh, Beam, uh, beam me up, Scott says, I followed your instructions and made a planted tank. I started out with five guppies about six months ago. Now I have like 25 guppies in a 10-gallon tank. That's magnificent. And he started with a five-gallon tank, so that's especially your tank crew as well. Very nice. No Pierce, no, no Pierce, no Pierce, NP, oh, it's not no, it's NP, NP Pierce. If you see it, stomach enlarged, don't feed it for a day. 
They can beg and beg for food until you kill them with kindness. Too true. Pamela Pappenfuss. Is there a point where I need to clean my sponge? Filter, it's the only filter I use. Um, yeah, there is. It's the point where you, you, um, the point where it becomes so heavy that, that every time you pick it up to move it, the, the hose pops off. It will, it will get so thick and heavy with muck that you'll just, it, you, you'll have to take it to the sink and wring it out. Uh, that takes about a year. So about a year. If it's a very, very active tank, maybe six months. Rarely, if ever, before that. Same with uh, um, if you have a uh, hang on the back, the cartridge. Leave that cartridge in there for a minimum of six months. Don't you dare take it out in less than six months. You don't need you don't need to fund the manufacturer. There's no point in doing that. The filter's value is in it, it hosting a microbiotic environment that takes time to build up. You don't want to throw it away once it gets to the point where it's a real value. Think about it. Uh, Ireland's not a real place that's mystical. I dare say. <laughs> oh, blood worms. You know what? They're not talking about blood worms. I know what they're talking about. Those little tiny red worms. They're, yeah. they're about less than an inch long. They are larvae. That's right. Um, they're they're a, um, a midge fly. And they're a wonderful food. Absolutely amazing food. I thought they yeah. were talking about blood worms. Blood worms are, blood worms get big. They get like, in fact, I've got some here. I should show you. Shall I show you what I'm talking about? Absolutely. I I was a, a, small one. a package of blood worms the other day to go fishing with. They're magnificent. They grow in Maine on, 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 in marshes. And they're harvested when the tide goes down. I'm going to oh, go wow. get the bag. And yeah, I'm going to show it to you. <laughs> so you'll know I actually do know what I'm talking about. Blood worms indeed. They're not blood worms. They're red worms. <laughs> well, I've been growing red uh, worms out. They're in not a lot even of red wigglers. Lot. That's something else again. That's an uh, animal. Yeah. yeah. Here we go. I'm really curious to see what these guys look like because I always just thought the red worms were the same thing as the blood worms. <laughs> now, red wigglers, yeah, that's something definitely different, guys. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be pretty cool. All right, this is going to be fun. Absolutely. Ooh, my goodie bag. <laughs> I've been to Walmart. I want you to know we have two Walmarts in Salisbury, one in the north and one in the south. The one in the north is very different from the one in the south. How is it different, you might ask? It is different because the clientele are different. The one in the north is city folk. The one in the south is country folk. <laughs> I go to the country folk when I want to get country stuff like <laughs> worms. We all know what fat, juicy red worms are. Oh, yeah. We don't need to open that one. But... 
Oh, this is night crawlers. We know what night crawlers are. There's a, a worm. I left them. I left them home for my axolotls. They are. Well, this has got tape on it. They are um, green worms. I got green worms, which is like an earthworm, only it's a little bit bigger, and it actually is green. Yeah, I've never and seen green worms. And the worm. axolotl love them to death. I need to cut this open. I don't have a knife right here. Oh, dear. I got a good knife. Yeah, I can already tell those look way different than what I feed my grommy. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is something else again. This is actually fishing bait, but I'm going to oh, feed cool. it to my... I'm going to go fishing with it, but I'm also going to feed it to my um, fish. Blood worms. Uh, some of you may know what a bristle worm is. The blood worm looks a little bit like a bristle worm, except that, whoa, what happened here? What happened? Don't know. On my end, everything's good. I need to connect. What is this? I lost my screen. Honestly. We're still there. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? All right. Oh, darn it. Yeah, everybody in the chat says they can hear you, Father Fish. Yeah, I don't think he can hear us, guys. I think something came unplugged. Yeah, it'll just take Testing, a second to work out, and he'll be right back. Yep, we can hear you. We got you. Can you hear us? Are you there? Uh, can you hear can us, you Father hear Fish? Me? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. She can't hear I, me. I can hear you, but I I don't know if you can hear me. I don't think you can hear me. I don't know what's going um, on. Let me try messaging on Discord. Maybe that'll help. Let's see. Dang, come on. Can can you hear me now, Father Fish? I just messaged Father Fish and let him know through Discord that we can hear him, so Testing, Let us come back up in just a second. Yeah, we can there. hear you. We, we can hear you loud and clear, Father Fish. Honest God. Hi, yippee. Cornwall, you crack me up, man. <laughs> Wish there was something that I can do on my end, but I'm in Florida, so not really much I can do. And he knows a lot more about electronics than me. <laughs> um, that's true, Billy Bob. <laughs> I'm going to post the link to the Discord in the chat. So if anybody isn't already there on Discord, please come join us. It's really an awesome community. And they've really taught me a lot. So if you're not already on, join Discord. Did a screensaver come up on him? I don't know on that. 
shouldn't be. I believe he has his screensavers turned off. Try yelling louder. Yeah, I don't think that'll work. <laughs> eh, I'm good, Ari. <laughs> At least I think that's how your name's pronounced. Is Ari, Ari? Not sure. But no pressure. So, let's see. Nope, FF isn't frozen. He had to walk away from his computer to disconnect a few things, reconnect a few things, try to reset some stuff. We can hear him, but he couldn't hear us. And it looks like, yeah, he probably had to turn his computer off and back on. Dina, there's a bombshell <laughs> scare in the chat. Do not panic. Wouldn't panic. <laughs> Dean or FF, just want to be sure I was told correct info. Do I need to treat slash condition the water prior to adding it to my tank or just add plain old sink water? That would depend. Are you using well water, chlorinated water? Personally, if you use chlorinated water like city water, just let it sit overnight. The chlorine will evaporate. You can use the conditioner if that's what makes you feel more comfortable, but a lot of people I know don't use it. Personally, I just use well water. So, <laughs> show us your tanks. I would love to do that, Billy Bob, but my computer's got a built-in camera, and there's no way I'm going to be able to pick up this monster. <laughs> I would definitely drop it on my tank. Now, I could show you about the Oompa Oola shrimp I've got, but in the coming weeks, I'm going to be having a 75-gallon tank set up in my new fish room. So then, hopefully, I'll be able to show you guys more fish. Whenever we have accidents or, you know how technology does, technology goes haywire. And whenever it goes haywire, you just have to work through it. Let's see what we got in the chat. Let's see. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. <laughs> So, what do you guys want to talk about? Until Father Fish gets back, what do you guys want to talk about? On a fresh spring water, that's something you're going to want to ask Father Fish because I've never used fresh spring water in Dixon Designs. But you, you're going to want to ask him. But I don't think you would need to dechlorinate it. I don't think you would really need to add anything to it. See, what's wrong with your water? It's clear. <laughs> I think you need to start again. Right, Cornwall? That's about it. Because most of my tanks end up being green water, which is perfect for my Daphnia cultures. And perfect for the baby fish fry. I like to raise guppies and platties. So, they love that stuff. Let's see what else we got. Oh, that's a good point, Charles. That's a really good point. And that's where Father Fish will know more about city water than I do. I've always had well water, so I've never had to worry about that. <laughs> Actually, Stan, I, I do have my own YouTube channel. I just don't really do lives. <laughs> always just do lives with Father Fish. Blackbeard algae, Edwin, you really don't have to worry about it too much. I My tank had a really bad outbreak of blackbeard algae. Between my platies, my nearite snails, and then not overfeeding my tank anymore, it cleared up in about a month and a half. The only place I still have some left is on the hang on back filter. But other than that, it's good. And the good thing is it won't hurt your fish because I was panicked when I first saw it. I just knew it was going to kill my guppies. Hey, fish tree. So you want to talk about nearites? Who's for them not mattering versus who thinks we should keep them, keep them low? New research shows some fish are sensitive to 10 ppm, but most are not until high levels. What you say? I'm oh, sorry, nitrates, not nerites. <laughs> Me, I never really test my tank. I just let it go natural and everything seems to go good. So... I don't really have any thoughts on that. I mean, if there's a problem, I do test, but I've just got a whole bunch of plants in my main tank and everything seems to go good. Let's see what else we got. And yes, Billy Bob, I also love 
nerite snails, but also ram's horn snails. Pretty much any snails I can get my hands on. <laughs> see. Um, Wild Bill, I don't have any panda platies yet. I do want to eventually get some. I do have some basic mutt platies that a fish friend of mine gave me, and I love those things. They are so cute. They almost remind me of Koi because she has different breeds in her tank, and they're just beautiful. Let's see. <laughs> you guys need to quit picking on John. <laughs> um, Fishtree says, some plants keep my levels low, but I don't keep any huge cichlids or mass protein eaters. Yeah, same here. I pretty much just keep guppies, platies, neon tetras. I think the biggest fish I have is a dwarf grommy. So. Oh, hey, peace, love puppies. Let's see. Jonas asked, can you have different types of snails in the same aquarium? Yes. I've had ram's horns, actually two different types of ram's horns in the same aquarium, along with mystery snails and some Malaysian trumpet snails. They won't fight. They won't kill each other out. Well, unless you put an assassin snail in there, then it's on because that assassin snail will hunt the rest of your snails down. <laughs> And salt and dance, I agree with you. I would love to have a wall of tanks, too. <laughs> Got, we're in the same boat on that one, though. Um, No, I don't have blueberry snails yet. Eventually, I want to get some blueberry snails. Those things are amazing. Um, Billy Bob, I don't really feed my snails. I'm... I have enough algae buildup that I really don't need to, but I have in the past before the algae built up, I had some little wafers through in there. They went crazy for it. And to clarify on wafers, it's the type that you would feed plecos. They loved it. Also, I had some snail treats that I got online. They don't really need it. They'll eat algae. Oh, cool. Stu, um, Stu, he has got bladder snails and trumpet snails. Let's see. M3, that's a question you want to ask Father Fish when he gets back. Liquid candy medium, as far as breeding guppies goes, I've heard that some breeders really like to have a bare bottom tank. That's what they like to do, and it's easier to catch the fish, but I've got a planted tank, and I'm getting new guppies left and right. So, it really depends on if you're wanting to breed a massive amount, or if you're just wanting to keep your pop population steady. Stan, I'm not sure who... DIY joyous. Sorry. Cornwall is too difficult to pick my favorite Star Wars movie. Pretty much all the old ones. Let's see what else we got. Hmm. <laughs> okay, you guys sometimes really crack me up in the comments. That's all I could say is sometimes you guys just crack me up. 
<laughs> Definitely will, Darbwire. Feel the pain on that. Hey, I'm going to check my messages real quick and see if Father Fish has messaged me back on Discord. He hasn't yet. He, he's probably had to reboot the computer. I don't know, the last few days, computers have just been acting crazy for me and him both. So, not sure how it's doing on your end. Has you guys' electronics been acting crazy too? <laughs> That's funny, Cornwall. <laughs> Now that I can do, Billy Bob, the outdoor pools, pretty much what they are, they're cheap kiddie pools from Walmart. I set them out during the winter, collected all the different leaves that had fallen, got about this deep of leaves in the bottom, collected some wild plants from around, throw them in there, added water, let it set for about two months. And then when I added fish, everything's taken off. I mean, it's taken off amazingly. I would have added fish a lot sooner. But it was cold, and I did not want to risk any of the fish dying. Which found a really good way around that. Just get bait minnows. They don't care if it's cold. <laughs> but I really do love those bucket ponds that I made. Because that's, that's where I got the idea from. was from a YouTuber called Bucket Ponds. I mean, I tweaked it a little bit because I was got so excited that I didn't build the substrate. I just wanted to go ahead, test out my own idea, see if it worked. And yeah, the decaying leaves, it turns into dirt. It was awesome. I plan to grow a lot more of floating plants in it and a lot more plants in it over the summer. <laughs> hey, I think we got Father Fish back. Can you hear us, Father Fish? One, two, three. Can you hear me? Oh, you can't hear nothing. Okay. He's working on it. Yeah, I definitely do. Thank you, Donna. That's a very good idea. That's really cool, Billy Bob. Hold on just a second. I'm going to type Father Fish back. Oh, I forgot you guys could do that too. <laughs> Hopefully he'll be back soon. Oh, there he went. As soon as I said that, he disappeared. <laughs> Well, let's see what we can do here. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, You want to know my opinion about bare-bottom aquariums? I think there's a time and a place for it, because if, if you're growing out something like Daphnia, that could be a lot easier. But... If you're doing it for fish, maybe there's certain fish that would prefer that, but not to my knowledge. I prefer just natural fish keeping, where it's pretty much a jungle tank. <laughs> Thanks, Billy Bob. Thanks, Rob. That is so true. Um, Maltis Factory, that is so true. <laughs> And yeah, Mason, you never know. It could be aliens. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. <laughs> Cornwall. <laughs> I wish I could help with cichlids, Edward, but I've, I've never kept cichlids yet. <laughs> I pretty much always stuck to the smaller fish. 
<laughs> Thanks, too. And that's a that's a really good point, um, Scott. That's that's a perfect point. Bare bottom tanks can come in handy if you're doing more scientific aspects or selective breeding. That that makes sense. You guys get so wild in the chats. <laughs> now, lava rock. I love lava rock in the aquarium. It actually holds a lot of beneficial bacteria. It's lightweight, much lighter than a lot of the other types of stones. And you can glue it together and make your own hardscapes. I actually just picked up a huge bag like that. Well, you can see it. Does, my, the, the reach doesn't even cover the screen of lava stone and i'm going to be building my own hardscape over the next coming weeks it's going to be fun and still yes the cardinal tetras are beautiful i've got two neon tetras but i need to get more because it's back from i've had these for years it's when pet smart sold them to me and went oh you can have it and you can have seven of them in a 3.5 no you need a bigger tank for that and plants. Let's see what we got in the chat. Now, that would be interesting in an deep analysis of bare bottom aquariums. That would be interesting, Cornwall. That's a good point, right? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't know that kernels are superior to neons. Yeah, neons, they are very finicky. At least my neon tetras were very finicky. And thanks, Whistler's Aqua Room. <laughs> Let's see. I think we got Father Fish back. I think. <laughs> Yay! He can hear us. Welcome back. I don't know. We, I I've got a pickup. Uh, okay, that should be it. Can you hear me now? Uh, yes, we can hear you. Can you uh, hear us? Yeah. Awesome. Um. I lost, uh, I lost the monitor. Oh no! Yeah, I don't know what happened. It just uh, everything went down. I think my uh, Wi-Fi signal went down. I'm pretty sure because I can't get Wi-Fi. I had to disconnect the other monitor. Um, it was um, now. What I need to do is control the volume. Let's see, I can do that here. Okay. So you've been having fun? Uh, yep, definitely have. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first time I've ever done a live stream by myself. So, How about yeah. That? that was yeah, actually well, fun. <laughs> it kind of happens that way, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Oh, dear. All right. I'm... What time is it? Quarter we are at, eight. yep. We're at 7.30. <laughs> we got a half an hour. Mercy. Yeah, I don't really know what happened. Um, it, um, my screen went black, and it's saying that it will not link to Wi-Fi. Oh, and I finally, the only way I could deal with it was to disconnect it, that allowed me to default to this monitor. Um, so I can't, I, I, I can't get. I guess I could get YouTube up. I don't particularly want to at this point. 
<laughs> we'll just go with what we got. Let me get re reconfigured here a minute. Yeah. All right. I'm all tangled up. There. Yeah, it's easy to do. <laughs> we were talking about blood worms. That we were. And I got them right here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me show you what a blood worm is. These are collected in Maine by uh, guys that go out in the mud flats. And they get, they get maybe a few hundred. And they take them in and sell them for however much they get. I don't know how much they get. These are pretty big. Okay, that's not what okay. I was expecting when you said blood worm. Yeah. I was now, expecting like the little that guys. Thing at the end that's hanging yeah. down. That has grippers on it. That looks like some kind of alien, you guys. It does, doesn't it? It's got four claws on it, and they bite and suck blood out. You are a brave man handling that thing is all I can say. I don't know if I would pick that up. <laughs> it's got no. <laughs> it, it's got um it's got like they're not feet. I don't know what you can call them. Feelers. You can kind of see them. Oh, that is wow. Uh like the the uh Saltwater bristle worm has those kinds of extensions, and it's got that that funny proboscis that it's I'm going to drop now. <laughs> that is the anyway, wildest looking worm so that, I've ever seen. That's that's a blood worm. That's an uh, that's an actual worm that sucks blood. I don't <laughs> Vampire know worm. Blood. I think what they suck is, I think, uh, probably clams. Maybe other worms, I don't know. But they're <laughs> that <laughs> is bizarre a animal. <laughs> very bizarre animal. <laughs> I'm going to put it away. Let's see if I can destroy something else in the process. <laughs> oh, dear. And Dogberry, yeah, that does look like something off the movie Doom. Uh -oh. it, 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 it just looks like something off a horror movie. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I got to take the rest of these back. <laughs> they got to be kept refrigerated. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was really interesting. Have you guys ever seen one of these worms before? An actual blood worm? Not the kind that you feed to grommies? Yeah, it is straight out of an alien movie. I agree with that. Liquid Candy Media, I agree with that. So, you're talking about blood worms. That's yeah. a blood worm. That is a blood worm, because I always thought it was the little things that come frozen that you feed the grummy. <laughs> right. Let's see. Maybe I can get YouTube up so I can get the... Oh, i got to move my green. Oh, Lord. All right. Am I? I got the volume off. All right, we're we're back and all together here, halfway together. The worm from Tremors. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? The Joey boxing match. That I have not been invited. Um, I haven't heard of that. Lucas was invited. So Lu Lu Lucas is in the joint. Joey boxing match. 
Joey, Joey doesn't, I don't think Joey appreciates me. I, I'm That's too bad. much of a threat to him, I think. Eerie, great fishing bait, yeah. Okay, Salongo Foil, August Codlum Saim. Oh, yeah, they reek so bad, not funny. Only if they're dead and rotten. Is Alex here? Who's Alex? Yeah, um, history. Yeah, Alex is here. Oh, is he? oh great. Mm -hmm. Hi, Alex. Are you in the boxing max, Alex? You ought to be. Joey doesn't like you much either, actually. Huh. Fish story. Who are you boxing? I'm not in. Nobody invited me. I don't know. Uh, some, uh, Lucas told me about it, but he didn't explain it, and I didn't ask, and that's all I knew about it. Right. Joey doesn't like Father Fish and Alex. That's true. All I can say is I'll box him. I ain't got a problem. If he don't like you too, I'll box him. <laughs> Sultana dance. So I had to treat condition the water and city water. It depends. If you have chloramine in the water, then you need to do something. Uh, the simplest way to deal with it is to put... Um, one vitamin C, 1,000 unit vitamin C tablet per five gallons. And that'll get rid of it. Uh, vitamin C is absolutely harmless. It, uh, in fact, it adds some carbonates ultimately. So it's really beneficial. But it will break the molecule, the, uh, 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 the, the, the chlorine ammonia molecule which is the problem with chloramine water. Joey versus fish story is long overdue. Uh, yeah, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> Too much bad blood there. Billy Bob says father fish is a heavyweight. Well, I got the weight to prove it, even though I've lost some. Oh, dear. Blueberry yeah, snails. Yeah, I heard about this. I need to see it. Oh, they're pretty. Uh, are they a plant eater? Christian I saying don't know. You, Alex, are they a plant eater? Father I Fish. Before I could watch the whole that. video. <laughs> but they're beautiful. I mean, I've never seen a snail that has like a blue striped body. They're gorgeous. Oh, the body. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Nice. How much time we got left? Alex, you want to come up? Let me give you a link. I don't know if I can get the link. Let me try. Um, I can send you the link on Discord. It's okay. I got it. I got uh, okay. it. Okay. I got it. There you go. Alex, come join him. Tell me about the boxing match. Are they literally boxing match? Or are they talking like I have no way? idea. No, I, I know nothing about it. Cornwall doesn't know who Joey is. Count your blessings. I, I'm not sure I do either. I haven't seen anybody on <laughs> Fish tube named Joey. <laughs> so it's got DIY. Is that the uh, name of his channels? DIY? There, there he is. Who is this? Alex. There he is. Hey Alex, you there? Yeah. Yeah. Hold hey. on. Alex. Hey. What which one? The me or the oh. Yeah, the other. Oh, we got two Alexes. <laughs> there he is. I was going to say, I'm looking okay, pretty Alex. useful. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, crazy, crazy. Well, like my good. equipment's been being knocked around today. I don't know what happened. I lost, I lost a monitor. 
I think I lost Wi-Fi for a few minutes. I think that's what happened. You know, but, you can you can always count on technology to not be accountable. Yeah, really. It just kind yeah. of and it, the struggle is always getting it back. Yeah. And, I, and I'm halfway back. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Um, you know, I had a number of surgeries, a number of dental stuff, but no, I'm doing pretty good. I'm spending lots of time in the fish room right now. I haven't been traveling as much because of all that stuff. Right. And, and so it's given me more time to like play with the fish room more rather yeah, than. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Let, let me show you. Ooh. Is that cool or what? Looking good, yeah. We're, we're getting there. It's coming. Wow. Yeah, that looks great. Yeah, that's awesome fish room. Yeah, that is nice. I like that. Are they all uh are they all father fish style tanks or are some yeah. of them a switch? Okay, no, they yeah. All are. Yeah, that's all I'll do. I can't yeah. very well do anything else. <laughs> I, I hear you. Yeah. And, uh, I, I've got a couple father fish style, a couple lasagna style, a couple. Well, I don't think I have any high tech at the moment, but I could easily make them high tech again. But right. um, yeah, just playing with all different types. And what I'm more interested in right now lately is um, breeding little live bears that are rare, like care species. Yeah. So like little metallic uh, black chin live bears and lamias and the Jamaican oh, metallic live fun. bears. and Yeah, that's fun. I've uh, had a lot of them over bears. the years. Never really done much with them. I've got a few now, but uh, uh, yeah, had for six months or more. I don't think anybody wants to buy them in any number, but I find them interesting. <laughs> right. So. so what Joey's boxing thing? What is yeah. that? Do you know? I, you know, I'm not really too sure. Um, obviously he and I don't have the best relationship. Um, but you know, I, to me, like he's done a number of things like this where he was going to open a public aquarium and he collected half a million dollars and then just didn't do it. Um, yeah, you know, that. And, yeah. And then there has been, you know, his gallery that he's redone a million times. So I don't know. I don't know with him. I mean, I'm going to be impressed if he can focus till August on one thing, but yeah, um, apparently I Lucas that. signed up right away. And I mean, he came into Lucas's live streams the last couple weeks and I mean, bought him a couple hundred uh, subscribers and um, they're, they're buddy, buddy on this and like acting like besties. It was actually a little interesting because when I, Popped in there after my live stream ended right before his and Joey was in there at the same time as me. And so I was a little like, uh Oh, how's this going to, you know, shake out. But I mean, I, to me, it's fine. If you like boxing, I don't know what it has to do with fish. I guess if people yeah. are interested in it, that's fine. But to me, I'm kind of just, it kind of just feels like, uh, I need attention. Come check this out. Like, like click, 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 click bait. But, yeah, attention sinking. Yeah, but I mean, to well, that's, own. What is, that's really what his channel has always been about. Yeah, always from the beginning. That's how yeah. he got where he is. Yeah, I and mean, he, he's, and he was very deliberate. Yeah, he's very. I mean, when I interviewed him on in the 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 infamous blowout on my channel, yeah. uh, you know, he said as much. He was lecturing me for not having ads on all the way for only putting well, that's them, right. you know and yeah. he certainly is he certainly has proven what what uh youtube really is all about yeah I mean, it really is all about clickbait i was watching a piece today a young kid 15 year old kid who's doing uh shorts and hitting hitting a million subs a month whoa and he's doing it by That's copying impressive. the most successful things that are out there. Yeah. It's pure clickbait. Yeah. I mean, it's well, the same thing. I, I kind of wanted to do a video because, you know, he's a nice enough kid. I've talked to him a few times, but like the guy down in Southern Florida, who's always pulling rare fish out of the water. And he's like, Oh my gosh, look what Paul, I found in Paul Kufa. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so, you know, it's like at first it was legitimate. It was like, you know, right. stuff that you'd find down there. And now it's like, look, I found an elephant fish and a tire track eel and a, and a, you know, a giant garami and, yeah, and they're all in this bucket, you know? And right. it's like, right. it, it kind of gets to the point where it's like, those fish won't live with that low of oxygen for more than 20 minutes. I hope you put them yeah. back in the bucket quickly. Right. 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 <laughs> um, so it's kind of one of those things where like, I've always had to watch that too. Like when you have a video that does well, you want to replicate it. It feels good. Right. And right. it's like, you have to just like you, I mean, you have to like decide what, where to be sensational or where do like, you know, really draw the line and versus like, what's the good information. And, and, and uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's sometimes right. it's hard. Exactly. And the trick for me, I, I try to be sensationalist, but I try to do it in context. Sure. So I'm yeah. putting something out that's worth listening to. Well, that's yeah. And that's just it. And, you know, it's smart in that, you know, then you get people like me or Lucas that, that do things in a similar way to you, but we might have a little twist or a little different opinion and we chime in and then we kind of all feed off each other. And I like yeah, that exactly. aspect yeah. of the community because we're all friendly. But right. but this whole boxing thing, it, the, the, the issue is that it really doesn't come from a, like a kind hearted or charitable place. It comes from a like, I need attention. I want to make some money place. Um, and they're billing oh. it as like a charity match and a and uh like we're all good sports and and i don't know they're trying to drum up some gonna be this the cops oh yeah yeah oh i had no idea yeah it's a it's an actual boxing match in new york in a ring oh my god yeah and it's going to be on pay-per-view and stuff apparently so i mean lucas was trying to get people to sign up for pay-per-view through his channel and I don't know. Um, I think I'm just going to have to hold my tongue on some of it. Um, yeah. You know. I did a couple of uh, Saturdays with Lucas. Yeah, I love Lucas. They yeah. were yeah, fun. Cool. Yeah. You want to do some? Yeah, I'd love to. Good. We'll do that. I'll get back to you. Okay. We'll get it together. That'd be fun. Yeah, that sounds good. I was actually just chiming in. You know, they just released a new meta paper on the effects of nitrates in fish and some fish like salmon and gobies stuff that lives in like really fast rivers tech pretty much is it seems to be impacted by nitrates even all the way down to like 10 or 20 parts per million in their like formation as a larval state in the egg um but that being said, like, then there's most fish, which don't care at all, all the way up to like 400 or something right? Uh, parts per million. So I was, I was asking in chat, you know, if anybody, and I've just been asking in general, like what say ye fish keepers, like where, you know, where people notice, like, I mean, you can keep fish, but do you get them to breed in high nitrates or is there a line, you know, that you shouldn't cross? Like, have you noticed one with particular species? For me, I notice like pseudomagills and rainbows tend not to breed very well if the nitrates are over like a hundred or so. They like water well, the, the changes. Real, the real key is if if you if you've got heavy planting, yeah, that, that does a lot to control nitrates. Yeah, you won't even if have to worry not about overfeeding, it. Overfeeding, yeah, you know, maintaining maintaining a stable environment, you're not going to have high nitrates. No, it yeah. isn't going to happen. I actually have the opposite problem in most of my tanks that have deep substrate. Like they have zero nitrate. No nitrate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 I had somebody today said, how do I get my nitrates up? They're at zero. I said, well, start by counting your blessings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Watch what you ask for. Yeah, really? Um, yeah. I don't know what the, you know, the answer to that other than doing an additive of some sort I was kind of thinking about that. Like, do you feed more? Do you, you know, like if you really did want that for just for the sake of the plants, you know, if you want to have your nitrates at like 30 or to 50 parts per million or something, whatever it may be, 
I was wondering, what do you have an opinion on that? Like what the best way to do is I, I'm always so resistant to buying something in a bottle and nitrates, adding it daily. Or nitrates are a function of ammonia. Yeah. So if you increase the ammonia, you're going to increase nitrates. Yeah. Everybody's scared to death of ammonia. Yeah. Ah. But the way you do it is, the way you do it is by allowing things to decay in the tank when sure. they die. Sure. Not taking, not taking everything out of the tank when it dies. Yeah. I can, yeah, that's true. That, that I just, I'm worried, like, I don't have enough stuff dying. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know yeah. about that. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, every once in a while, I'll get a, I'll get a fish kill. I had a fish kill about a week ago in my, in my 30. I haven't talked about it because uh, I'm not sure what happened. But I got that frustrating? A yeah, I know. I've reached the point where that with that tank where I think I'm kind of done with <laughs> I need to I need to substantially break it down. Yeah. I'm not going to take all the substrate out. I won't do that. But I'm going to get it down to about two inches. I take all the plants out, take the fish out, drain it down and and then recap it and replant it. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, 20, it's twenty four years old. Oh I, man! Wow. That's gonna be so hard to do. Is that one from the shop, or was that one that was yeah. at your house? Yeah, it's the one from the. Sh yeah, it's from the shop in Florida. Yeah! Wow. Yeah. Man, you drove up forever. You drove up to Yankee territory with it. I did. <laughs> it into water in it. Yep. And then refilled it when I got here. It had fish in it. Nice. That's that's always impressive. When I moved houses, I did that with about six of my tanks, and all of them were 55s or smaller, but the 55 was a nightmare to move. Oh, uh, so yeah. I know. We, we, got, we got suction cut with the handles like that you can yeah, buy yeah. online, right. and then it still took four of us guys carrying I believe it, I believe it wow. carefully. Yeah. But that day that we moved, it was 28 degrees. Wow. And so I was like, man, we've got to keep these fish warm and we got to do this quick. Uh, Luckily I only moved about 40 minutes away, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's always hard to let go of an old cycled substrate. I know, tank. It really is, but I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting frustrated with it. Well, and you're at the point now where you've probably seen what it's going to do for the most part. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I now it's so. going to probably plateau. And then I repeat. That's what happened. Yeah. Yeah. I'll keep, I'll keep enough of it to, to you know, to still be able to call it the same tank. Sure. Yeah. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just get rid of most of the organics. Yeah. Uh, is it Dinah or Diana or how? Um, how do Dina. Dina. Uh, Dina. I'm I'm wrong on Hi. all accounts, but uh, uh, I just happens. wanted to officially say hello because I guess I, we haven't really said hello so uh well, sorry nice about the hello. delayed uh, introduction but hi <laughs> hi it's no problem um Dina's yeah. in florida oh cool yeah yeah oh and you asked about blueberry snails so we got yeah. a batch of them six months ago in washington um i where have a look what's that where are they from they're from papua new guinea and chris okay. lukoff the shrimp king guy yeah. He's the one out of Germany that first found them in 2016 and um, brought them in in 2019 to Germany. He brought one group in and then he his collectors that he had uh, subcontracted for Dennerle uh, or Garnerle or Dennerle, one of them. Uh, they then sold them to Chinese exporters out of Hong oh. Kong. And oh. what I guess what five years later now, they had been breeding them in Hong Kong. The few that they they were able to buy off of uh, the the Papua New Guinea guys that were collecting them, and now they're out in the hobby, you know, but in the mass, uh, in in mass, they're they're probably going to be hitting the U.S. you know a lot more. They've been kind of trickling in the last year or so, 
Um, but uh, yeah. Oh, no problem about the video, buddy. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, the the snails are really nice in that they, uh, you know, I did a video on them recently. If you want to like learn a lot more about them, but yeah, I talked to Chris. Follow. I haven't followed it. Are they yeah. an egg layer or live bear? So they're a live bear, but they only have one baby that's about the size of a very small pea or something like that. I mean, like, like an apple snail. Yeah, they're kind of they're kind of unique in the hobby sense. They also burrow sometimes. Um, they're mostly active at night, but they do come out in the day still. So they're kind of like this kind of wishy-washy on any one you can't it's hard to call them like nocturnal it's hard to call them a burrowing snail but they um they seem to only touch dead plant material unless you like put them in a totally brand new <laughs> tank um they'll eat tissue culture plants but i've seen every snail seems to eat those um yeah. Because they're that those plants have not yet had the hormone signals to protect, like to callus up and wax up the leaves. Because exactly they haven't decided right. if they're aquatic or terrestrial or what they are, you know, the tissue yep. cultures. Yep. Um, so until they do that, they're pretty vulnerable to any sort of, you know, scud or, and yeah, anything. Even like a pleco will rip the leaves off of it pretty easily accidentally. Right. Um, but yeah, the blueberry snails are pretty cool in that their body is a, a purple to like a really deep purple to even like burgundy sometimes. And then some of them are dark, dark navy blue. And then they either have yellow or electric orange speckles all over oh. them. There's a, uh, there's a strain of nerites in, I think, Vietnam that, that have rainbow patterns, whirls of color. Oh yeah, it's kind of naturally. They uh, they have not made it to the states yet. It's there's been a, five or six years. There's I'm another gonna... one um, out of Papua New Guinea, uh, and they go from Papua New Guinea all the way out to the Solomon Islands, like out far into the Pacific. Wow. Huh. But they are a um, brackish snail that lives in the mangroves, but will adapt to fresh water. And they they call them antler snails, but not the ones that have horns. I have no idea why they're calling them antler snails, but that's what they're calling them on the order guides. And they're like, um, they almost have, it, it looks almost identical to plaid, but it's soft, like pinks and peaches and oranges. Oh, nice. And then oh. they'll have like a dark red and a dark green and a dark blue line going the complete 90 degrees or 180 degrees. No, not 180, 90 degrees uh, through that pattern. Um, and they're really tiny, but the, I like those too. I got a ha my hands on some a year ago, but I've never seen them since. So there are oh. so many snails in this hobby, you know, and the first aquarists are obsessed with snails. You know, if you look at the history of the hobby, they well, thought that, right. yeah. they thought that well, that was easy the, to keep. Yeah. I've got, I've got probably a hundred or more snails in my saltwater tank. Yeah, wow. Locally. It's, and it's new species are popping up all the time. It's yeah. Weird. I've got four or five species in there. And yeah. they're all native. They're all local natives. Yeah, that's cool. So you're enjoying yeah. the, the Chesapeake, huh? I am. I'm I'm looking in the next week or two I want to get my boat out. That's oh. when I really that's when I really enjoy it. Yeah. When I get out that's and start fun. collecting. Get around. That'll and, be it. That'll be fun. Grass flats. Push my net through some grass flats. Yeah. Let's maybe get I'm some pipe fish. Sticklebacks. There's a brackish stickleback locally that I'm Is that the nine local. spine? A lot, or? Of pipe fish. a lot of pipe fish. Pardon? Is that the nine spine stickleback or? No, I think it's three actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I love sticklebacks. They have some of the most interesting spawning behaviors. And you've got some really neat ones. Yeah. You, are. you got freshwater ones. Yeah. Yeah. The ones we have are one of the few small fish we have. I mean, we only have in Washington oh. 52 species of fish, and that includes invasives. So, wow. wow. And nine of them are salmon. So, I mean. Wow. 
Yeah, so oh, a man. quarter of our native fish are salmon. We have two endemic species is all. Um, but it's because of the ice age. The glaciers were here yeah, yeah, right. and they scraped all the inland soil and lakes and everything. Like that's what formed the Puget Sound here in Seattle. And um so the last seven million years before the ice age that were warmer, uh, you know, when it was almost like subtropical here, we don't get to know what fish were living here, unlike Alabama right, and right, Tennessee right. and stuff where they all the shiners and stuff, you know, survived. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing I'm looking to do. I want, I'm, I want to try to get natives from my big freshwater tank. That's awesome. There, there's a awesome. lot of entry. I'm um, yeah, Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, Maryland, Virginia. There's so much really cool stuff. Yeah. And within a couple of hour drive. Yeah. I know. I always forget how close everything is on the East Coast compared to the West Coast. Oh, I know. You know, I know. it's, it's I like I got to drive to Florida for that reason. Yeah. A, an all day trip to go from one end of from just halfway through the state. Yeah. Yeah. Two days to make the whole trip. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, you know, some of the native fish I would love to have indoors, um, like the saffron shiners and the uh the dusky shiners. Uh, man, there are some beautiful fish, oh, especially yeah, when they really are. Yeah, I mean, I think most people have seen rainbow shiners by now, but a lot of them are cold water fish. They really that was the problem I was having. I was able to get um sticklebacks from Tennessee that came in with the uh chubs, the bait fish. Yeah, but I couldn't keep them in Florida, it was, it was too warm. Yeah. They needed to be cold. Well, we're at the witching hour here. Alex. Oh, boy. Yes. I better disappear. <laughs> Happy Thanks. to see you. Thanks for having me up. Good to see you guys. It's good to see you. Yeah, we're going to say goodbye to everybody. Why don't we all? We'll Have a wonderful that. evening. Okay. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. <laughs>